In Ottawa, Jean Chrétien was determined his legacy would include leadership on global warming. We have international obligations, and Canada is always at the forefront of international obligations. And south of the border, the richest corporation in the world didn't like what it saw in the Great White North. Exxon did not want that to happen. Exxon did not want Canada to succeed. It would have been an object lesson that uh, the American people would have taken to heart and uh, would have responded to and would have insisted on a change in domestic American policy. Behind the scenes, then Minister of the Environment David Anderson was feeling the heat from Exxon. Aggressive, uh, blunt, um, you just don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we are in the business, of, and, we, and we know, and furthermore, there is no certainty on the climate change file because we've got the people who know that, and uh, you don't, and it was very, um, very aggressive. Notice you're not hearing much about global warming anymore. It's all the focus on climate change. It was just about then that Canadians first started to hear from a retired University of Winnipeg professor, Dr. Tim Ball. Since 1998, the world's been cooling down. Dr. Ball has dedicated himself to spreading the word that the mainstream science of climate change is a crock. Today, he's come to this hockey rink at Dawson Creek in the Yukon to preach to the choir, the BC Oil and Gas Association. First of all, consensus is not a scientific fact. Back in the 1970s, as I'll tell this audience, the consensus was we were heading for another ice age. That was wrong, too. That's the first thing. It's consensus on the scientific the second thing Like his American counterparts, Dr. Ball rejects the predominant scientific opinion that man-made emissions are causing the Earth's temperature to warm. You see, what happened was that somebody said CO2 goes up, the temperature will go up. A theory. The theory became fact overnight, when normally a theory is challenged by other scientists. All scientists are skeptics. And what happened was, the minute people like me got up and said, hold on a minute, oh, paid by the oil and gas companies, don't understand. Indeed, as in the U.S., money is an issue for the denial movement in Canada, with questions about where Dr. Ball and the anti-global warming group he helped found, the Friends of Science, get their funding. They basically filtered their money through a series of foundations and organizations in Calgary to avoid being labeled as someone who's uh, oil industry funded. Jim Hagen is a Vancouver public relations man who says he decided to fight back against deceptive practices in the global warming debate. With a grant from someone in the environmental movement, Hagen set up a website to keep tabs on what climate change skeptics and deniers say and do. Tim Ball and his friends of science are at the top of the list. It's almost like an echo chamber where you, everywhere you look, you have, these people are out there saying, you know, no, uh, you know, second, there's no, there's no scientific evidence that secondhand smoke causes any sort of health problems. And after a while, people start to believe it. And the same type of thing is going on right now with climate change. It's well orchestrated, it's well funded, and, uh, and it's in Canada. Is it working in Canada? Has it had the desired effect? Absolutely. Recent research shows that about 50% of Canadians think that there's a big scientific debate going on about climate change. If you look in scientific literature, there is no debate. It's absurd. And they've got to know that it's absurd. The Friends of Science produced and distributed thousands of copies of this. Climate Catastrophe Cancelled, it's called, a video rebuttal of global warming. When the Vikings were sailing in Arctic waters, and when the Vikings were farming in, in Greenland in soil that's now permanently frozen, uh, the question is then what caused that warming? As for whether the money for his video and other projects comes from the oil industry, Dr. Ball will tell you he doesn't know and he doesn't want to. The important thing, he says, is the science. I am one of the few people qualified to speak about climate change. I've got a PhD in climatology and of course they see me as the great threat because I'm able to communicate with the public. Dr. Ball is often called the first Canadian PhD in climatology, though there appear to have been many others before him. The Friends of Science website says he was a climatology professor for 32 years 
though that would mean he was a professor while still in high school. Small discrepancies, perhaps, but it's likely that few in his audience know that Dr. Ball has not published on climate science in a peer-reviewed scientific journal for almost a decade and a half, an important distinction for a so-called expert. People don't ask about their credentials. Most of these guys that you see quoted uh, aren't climate scientists. Some of them do have PhDs and they have a science background, but they're, they're not doing science. Uh, they're doing PR. They're, they don't have scientific papers that were published. What's more, Dr. Ball sometimes refers to the work of another scientist who hasn't published original research in years. You may remember Dr. Fred Singer. When Friends of Science was founded, there was a big news conference in Ottawa, a kind of coming out party for Canadian climate change skeptics. Visitors came from the U.S. as well, stars of the American denial movement including familiar names. One of the special guests was Dr. Singer. Uh, you have something that uh, is costly, that damages the economy, and doesn't do any good, you know, why do it? Who's been funded by the oil and tobacco industries. And Dr. Patrick Michaels was there. He shared a million dollar grant from the coal industry and works for groups that get millions from Exxon. And on Dr. Singer's right, Dr. Tim Ball. And who paid to bring them all here? One of the principal sponsors was Imperial Oil, the Canadian subsidiary of Exxon. And who put it all together for the Friends of Science? The event was arranged by another name you might recall, APCO Worldwide, the PR firm hired by tobacco companies to convince Americans that cigarettes aren't bad, now working with the oil industry to persuade Canadians that global warming isn't real.